Hey, what is up everyone, Norman from Future Studio University. Welcome to another video in our Redford series. Now before we get started, you should know that you can find the content as tutorials and all of the code snippets for easy copy and pasting on our website. The link is the first thing in the description below. All right, let's get started. In this video, you will learn the difference between synchronous and asynchronous execution. These terms were already used when you describe computing processes. A synchronous process is waiting for each step to be completed before moving on with the next one. Your simple Java code works synchronously, since it executes one line, statement after statement, and waits until the line of code is completed before going to the next line. Asynchronously, on the other hand, is if the process continues to run other commands after it started the computation, and when the result of the computation is available, it will handle it. This idea also exists in the area of network requests. The application can either hold and not do anything until network requests came back with a result, which would be synchronous requests, or asynchronous requests would continue to run the app and simply update them when the network request has succeeded. Luckily, Retrofit supports both ways, which we will look at now. I'm reusing the app we have implemented in the previous video on Retrofit. If you're wondering why I'm showing you the interface decoration, in the older Retrofit 1.9 version, you had to specifically declare if an endpoint was either synchronous or asynchronous. With Retrofit 2.0, you only have a single declaration for both ways. The return call object offers you either execution method. So let's look at that in practice. This is our main activity, where we gather out some user input and pass the data to the send network request method. Here, we created a Retrofit client and then executed our request. Without further explanations, I simply use the nq method. This is the asynchronous way of doing it. You can recognize it fairly easy with the callback parameter we have to pass here. Retrofit will return the result once the network request has finished. Until then, the app can continue to run. I mentioned earlier that the call object allows both execution methods, synchronous or asynchronous. So let's look at the synchronous one. You're going to comment out the asynchronous one. Now the NQ executes the request asynchronously. That's why we have to pass a callback. Execute, on the other hand, simply returns the result like a regular Java function call. So we're going to use execute and have the result right away. We have to wrap it in a try catch in case something goes wrong on the IO level. Now all of the things that happen behind the scenes from creating a request, opening a network connection, pausing the server response, is all wrapped in this single line. Isn't that fantastic? So let's run this. All right, let's add some sample input. All right. Our app crashes. So let's look what happened. So here you can see that there's a network on main thread exception. So the crash is actually for a good reason. If you run a synchronous network request on the UI thread, it will hold the entire UI until the request is done. Essentially, your app freezes. This is incredibly annoying to the user. Technically, it's possible, and if you have an old Android phone, it actually will still work, but it's just bad practice to run network requests on the UI thread. That's why newer Android versions will just simply crash the app. Now this doesn't mean that you can't use synchronous execution on Android. You simply have to do it on a thread, which is a new UI thread. So let me show you that. Now instead of doing it from the UI thread, we will pass it to a backbone service. In this case, a simple intent service. In the intent service, we will simply add the request we just made and see if it works from here. We still have to start the background thread. So we will do that with this intent. So once our method arrives here, it will start the service, jump into here, and then execute the method synchronously on the background thread. 
So let's see if we get a response here. Okay, I'm going to add some data. Even though it doesn't really matter since we had it hard coded in the background thread. But as you can see, the synchronous way of doing actually works in the background thread. So feel free to use it whenever you are in the background thread or maybe in a Java server environment but stick to the asynchronous way of doing it as soon as you are in a UI thread. Let's review what we have learned. You have seen the general concept of asynchronous and synchronous execution. You have also seen that Vetrofit supports both out of the box. Thanks for watching, like the video if you've learned something, and subscribe if you want to see more videos in this series. Make it rock and enjoy coding.